now and then it keeps you running Never seems to die Trail spin with fear Not enough Living on the outside uh, I'm Jay from Sunvolt and I'm selling some stuff uh, reason being it's kind of a combination of things uh, you know you can't take this stuff with you when you go and uh, adding a little clarity getting rid of clutter you know if someone gets something positive out of these instruments uh, that's great this guitar here uh, has a story behind it I traded it uh, for a 1962 Mercury Comet to Brian Henneman of the Bottle Rockets let's try getting it back uh, he's never asked for it. I mean, <laughs> I'm not sure who got the better deal, you know. They were both, both classic things. Sure. This has always kind of been a go-to guitar because of the great sounding uh, Filtertron pickup and the, the whammy bar. use this song, this uh, guitar on the song Hoping Machine from the New Multitudes Project. This harmony was also uh, used on the New Multitudes Project for uh, a couple of songs. Um, it found its way onto the cover of the uh, Sunvolt Notes of Blue recording and it just seemed like it had the right, right vibe, the right aesthetic. <laughs> Shop. This one sort of takes it all the way back from me because I, I started learning how to play electric guitar on a guitar almost exactly like this. Uh, SG Junior, early 60s, uh, the one I started with was Maroon. Um, but this one, uh, you know, I wound up using on the first Sunvolt record, Trace. Um, you know, an example would be, I would use it on songs like uh, Loose String. Like I said, I learned to play on one of these, and it was interesting because uh, learning to play guitar in the 1970s, which when I was getting started, you know, old classic guitars like this weren't really valued much, you know, so this was just like 100 bucks or whatever, and you know, just classic, great sounding instruments. Guitars like this wound up picking up along the way, it's, you know, it's what we did when we were touring, you know, even up through the 90s, you know, there was no internet early 90s, didn't even really have cell phones, so what you did is kind of spent your time looking through pawn shops and uh, music stores and eventually finding stuff like this and, you know, I can't say which songs it would have been on, but it, it, I'm sure it found its way into some of them. So this is the uh, first pedal steel guitar I ever got. I'm still learning how to play, but I've played this one out a few times. Uh, it's an old, old Fender with a branded logo, and uh, you know it's, it's got a couple mysteries associated with it. One being, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but there's an outline of the guy's name that used to play it called Red. I picked up the guitar in the St. Louis area, and there was a sort of a famous session pedal steel guitarist named Red Rhodes, so it could have been his, you know, I can't authenticate that, but uh, that's one mystery. And the other mystery is what year it is exactly. It's, uh, it's one of the pots is dated 1956, and, you know, Fender started putting pedals on supposedly in 1957, so it's a 56 or 57. There's the uh, classic Warner Brothers thing. Hey. Um, the, the amp back there, the uh, basement, tweed basement, uh, that one, you know, I've had that since 
the early 2000s, and uh, I picked it up at a pawn shop in uh, Augusta, Georgia. I don't know, so I guess it's always going to have kind of a golf vibe. There was like a golf tournament going on or something. You know, going back to the year 2000, uh, starting with the first solo record I did, I've had a home studio since then, so a lot of mic preamps, you know, a couple effects processors, things like that, just left over from uh, the studio. So uh, some of that's up for sale as well. Uh, I knew that these pieces were used to create a lot of the, you know, the great music that I grew up listening to, you know, going all the way back to the 50s. So there was, there was sort of an inherent character in instruments like this, and you knew that, you know, not a lot of people were using them to make the popular mainstream music that was being made. So, you know, I gravitated towards the older stuff, just knowing that that had to be the right sound. <laughs> 